This is not that meeting. No, that's right. Okay, so let's call to order today's meeting of the Ways and Means Committee for October 26th. Remember that this meeting is being live streamed and everyone please uh, silence your phones or put them on vibrate or something so that we're not interrupted. And please remember that the microphones are very sensitive so they'll pick up cross discussions and such and disrupt the uh, meeting. For the public, uh, if those that are watching already know, but uh, this meeting can be found on www.orangecountygov.com. Click the tab to legislature and locate the meeting on the calendar. At this time, would everyone uh, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic which stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Cherry uh, Ann, roll call, please. Magnus Present. Russia. Here. O'Donnell. Here. 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 All present. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, so let's start first off with uh, number one, Eric Denega. Ryan, nice. Welcome. Number one is request supplemental appropriation to the capital project budget for design and renovation of the Caroline building. This project has been approved under the 2022 capital plan as project number 28 and upon approval, a new capital project will be created in the amount of $1,500,000 to come from bonding. Moved by Brescia, second. Okay. Total. Brian. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is for the Caroline building. This is for this is on Hatfield Lane in Goshen. Village Goshen over here, just to convert the building into uh, record storage, the whole entire building. Uh, this would be to update a lot of the main systems in there and uh, maximize the storage. We can bring a lot of stuff over from Iron Mountain that we currently store on site. How much? So go ahead and refresh. We don't have those exact figures yet, as we the design consultant will design this so we can maximize. The storage we have, we expect that everything will be able to come off Iron Mountain, but uh, that's preliminary right now. Chance. We spend a fortune. Right? Yes. Yes, we do. And of course, uh, many of it, you uh, took tours of that building when we were looking at renovating uh, the building and took a tour of the storage that we have there. Uh, that, but that's got to be probably three or four years ago. Ms. Tortel. Thank you, sir. How much approximately did we spend with Iron Mountain and I think it's it's over 200000 in well, for the, closer to closer to three. Closer three. three. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't remember the exact thing. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Any other questions? Other legislators present? Let the record note that Chairman Chairwoman Benelli is here. Any questions? Yes, Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Approved? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you. And again, it, it should be noted also that this did pass Mr. Cheney's uh, Physical Services Committee yesterday as well. Next up, Lawrence. Letter A is request supplemental appropriation for a proposed 2022 capital expenditure for replacement of window coverings. This is proposed project number 104 in 2022 capital plan. And upon approval, a new project will be created in the amount of $160,000 to come from bonding. Second. Thank you. Lawrence? So I, I hope you have a backup document with this, but this is for new um, drapery, um, tracking for the, the window shades and solar shades as well. Um, this is good. Okay. Questions from committee members? Yep. All right. Um, also, Lawrence, I noticed again, this is coming from bonding. Do you know your um, uh, account balance? Sure, it's uh, 44,661,000 approximately. So down just a little. Okay. Hearing no questions, all in favor as presented? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
Thank you. Uh, let it be request supplemental appropriation for a proposed 2022 capital expenditure for upgrading dietary food service equipment. This is proposed project number 105 in the 2022 capital plan. And upon approval, a new project will be created. And again, this is in the amount of $53,072. Come from bonding. Motion one second, please. Total. Second. Second. Chain. Lawrence. Um, so we typically do this annually. We do $50,000 annually. This is a little bit more than that. <clears throat> There's quotes uh, here for two rolling refrigerators, one stainless steel hot food, uh, five well steam table, and a uh, Carter Hoffman meal delivery cart. Okay. Questions from committee members? Okay. Hearing none, all in favor as presented? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Very. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Welcome. Uh, next up, we have budget review. Uh, Dan Castricone, <coughs> risk management. For those with the book, it uh, starts on pages 441 to 450 for risk management. Good afternoon, everyone. One. This is Liz Mattis. Do you have uh, page notations for any comments you're going to make? So that uh, people who have the book could maybe. Uh, I uh, actually, we Liz went through and put the page numbers on my book to correspond with your book. So excellent. That way, uh, people can together. see exactly what you're talking about without flipping too much. Thank you. So we are. Um, I believe we came in with uh, we're doing five hundred dollars of our contractual last year. Uh, we're looking for an increase based on the addition of a assistant or deputy uh, risk management um, officer. Uh, I sent an email out to everybody yesterday, I believe, with the uh, justification that's been approved on the uh, on the county executive side, and uh, it's something that uh, that we really need. Um, currently, we are a, a small department, but we're very senior. And uh, you know, I have concerns about continuing uh, continuation uh, without interruption of services. Should we have some retirements? I think that's entirely possible. That uh, deputy risk management person will be cross trained uh, throughout the department, so they can fill in any place that we might be down a person, and uh, until we can reach that. Be happy to answer any questions that uh, that you guys have. Questions from Camille? Okay, motion in a second. I, I, I asked Mr. Cheney that. Motion in a second for a discussion. No, for, for, no we're, we're not going to approve immediately. Carrie, I need that. For Duke and Hines. Thank you. Okay, questions from committee members? Ms. Totel. Uh, page 446, proposed position. Um, just above the total for personnel services, 569970. That's the proposed position of risk management officer, uh, assistant. Mm -hmm. Can you explain the need and, and the uh, That was the, the email that we sent to everybody with the justification for that. Mm -hmm. The, um, you know, as I said, we're, we're a small department. I sign. Well, pretty much all 1500 contracts that uh, that come through. So when I'm, you know, when I'm not available to have a backup, but basically I have my laptop with me all the time. So I can do that whether I'm on or whatever, if I'm traveling. Um, we also have two very senior people in safety that are both retirement eligible. What I'd really like, and we are been down a person in the benefits portion. We also have very senior people there. I want to get a con, you know, a continuity in our department to get a, an assistant in, rotationally train them through each section of our department so they can fill in where it was needed, serve as a backup for me, start doing some of the training classes and the inspections. Also to follow up on the insurance claims, you know, to have a separate person that's just tracking the claims and making sure that we don't miss deadlines and to get reimbursed. And, 
It's just mostly for the benefit of the public because they can't oh, see they this. Can't see they, that. they can't see this email, so I just like to sure. you know, have it out there for them on um, record. Now, will this person uh, be authorized to sign the contracts, or no? Will it still only be you? I think you know, as a, someone who's going to be in the management tier, that we would like to get that person authorized to sign the contracts upon the work. So perhaps some someday I could go on vacation without my laptop. <laughs> we all dream of that. <laughs> Thank you. And thank you for the benefit of the public you for bet. the record. Thank you. I appreciate that. No further questions. Right. Sure. Thank you. Any other questions from committee members? Anything you had to note and explain under the employee assistance program, 451 to 453? I believe that contract is, uh, is coming up soon. Yeah, the last date of that contract um, is April 30th. So I'll be putting that out to bid sometime in November, December. You know, we um, the usage is pretty much on par with what it was last year. Um, it's paid from partially county money. Then we get money from the, the fire departments. We get money from OC on that sixty five thousand dollars. It's spread. Okay. Questions from committee members. Hearing none. All in favor of the budget. Uh, for but, uh, risk as presented. Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? Carried. Thanks, Dan. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Sir. Next up, general services. Mr. Burkhoff. Certainly. Chairman, before we get going with this, I need to disclose that my uh, stepdaughter is employed by the general services. I submitted a letter to the ethics board updating my middle and um, have not got a specific response as to how I have to deal with this issue. Um, so in the meantime, I will be uh, not participating in any discussion today or voting on the uh, motion. Thank you, sir, for the notice. She's doing an incredible job, by the way. <laughs> Great. Uh, motion and a second for discussion, please. Hotel, Hines. And again, for everyone, uh, this starts on page 421 to 430 for general services and info technology, page 431 to page 440. Go ahead, Jim. Thank you, sir. Uh, we're very excited to present our budget this year as every year, um, but we are excited because although it looks like on the uh, purchasing side of it, we're up like 30%, uh, a couple about $400,000, uh, is because we're able now to backfill a couple of the positions that we haven't had for the last few years. Uh, principal clerk, contract coordinator, and we are hiring a purchasing agent for the new year. Uh, with the workload and everything that's been coming in between all of the grants, the ARPA stuff, uh, consolidation of contracts, our procurement team is really, really stretched thin. And they have been, but we've been making do with what we had. And, you know, until the county was in a better place. Uh, this will help us to be able to um, go out and actually do our job a little better with a third uh, purchasing agent, be able to negotiate more, make sure nothing falls through the cracks. And if you look at the rest of the stuff, it's pretty much just CSEA and, and basic stuff that we have no control over for the general service budget. Okay. Uh, we've, we've sent everything out. We've explained why we need the positions. We're here to answer any questions. Right. Yes, I did receive this earlier this week. Thank oh, yeah, and we, we tried to put it on a nice sheet for you guys so you wouldn't have to flip through all the pages and everything. It has the page number on the sides here, which it's in relationship to your book, mm -hmm. and it gives you the breakdown of everything. Did you want to get highlight any highlights uh, for us? or uh, Just basically the uh, principal clerk, contract coordinator, and uh, purchasing agent were the biggest things that stood out. Um, if you look, you know, on the second pages and stuff, it's pretty much a little increase in fuel and paper costs that because of supply chain issues and we know fuel and, and paper goods are probably going to go up. They already have. They have, yes. <laughs> it's going to be even more, I believe, for the, in the new year. So, okay. buy your toilet paper now. <laughs> <laughs> Just like COVID. <laughs> yeah. From one thing to another. Okay. Questions about the budget? Some committee members or other legislators present? Mr. Paduk, remember page numbers, please. So on page 425, it's under personal services. 
206, 179, it comes with all those new positions. Yeah. And this year you have money in your budget that you said you back or you hired them. Right. Uh, uh, we're looking to, yes. Well, these are from, from promotions. So people are sliding up. Principal clerk, no. Uh, contract coordinator, uh, the person was promoted and the other person slid in. So we have enough money to carry us through there, but then we need the money to maintain it, sustain it for the new year. So you're going to backfill those positions, though, you said? Uh, these are backfill positions. Oh, they are back yeah, yeah. Yeah, the one principal clerk, that individual unfortunately passed away and we were never able to backfill it. And then the uh, contract coordinator person was promoted, so we're backfilling it. They're not, those two are not new positions, they're just being backfilled. We do a couple other questions. Okay, sure, keep going. Uh, Page 435, 435, your contractual book. Just tell me a little bit, you have a, a $290,000 increase in your contractual book. What is the contractual? Yeah. That's the Yeah, that's our other budget. Okay. That's where I could look at that one next. Yeah. I was gonna say I didn't see them on there. No worries. That's okay. That's okay. No problem at all. But we know that question's coming next. Mm -hmm. right. You're prepared. Quick think. <laughs> Ms. Totel. Is she have more of a point of information for me to understand all the human pieces? I don't know if this question directed to you, but for Deb, because you mentioned the proper funding and the additional workload in general services. I know we approved an outside accounting firm. We hired them beginning of the year, last year, to handle the ARPA funding. So we still have to, there's still pieces that we are providing here to go to that accounting firm, or I'm yeah. trying to get to understand. So, so there's the, no ARPA funding in this budget. I, I understand. Right, but, but what, what we did. are talking about right. the workloads. I, I can answer to, that, that basically. Yeah. This is for procuring those goods and right. services that we're using, utilizing that money for. Mm -hmm. ARPA is a totally different bear. It's right. all federal guidelines. Procurement is much more difficult than going and just doing if you're going off of OGS or the federal uh, GSA contracts, right. this requires more depth and more reporting and they want to see that you properly procured and bought that stuff or they'll take the money back. And we don't want that to happen. With those contractors, are you running into any problems with, they changed the, uh, for federal contracts, they changed for Providers that you have to go for a SAM number now. You have to go through SAM for a unique ID versus the old IDs that they were have. Well, right. And there's a That's... huge backlog yes. in the SAM program, especially if you had a change of address. Correct. Run across that with, with West Point. Yes. Do you have any problems where you weren't able to award a bidding contractor because of that, or are we making exceptions because of the backlog? No, we haven't. We haven't in our department ran into that yet. Our biggest thing on some of the stuff that was um, companies trying to find MWBE and DBE people to be able to work that federal grant or contract. That's been our biggest problem. Okay. Can I just answer this just quickly? So the Department of Finance, we're the ones that Handle. register for yeah. SAM. And yes, we are running into that exact issue that it's changed our address. So I know Deputy yeah. Michael is on point every day dealing with SAM, trying to update that address that we don't know how was changed. Yeah, so they yes. changed that us. Now we have to submit the documents to change it back. Which is not so much. Yeah, well, there's uh, even if you create an incident, um, they run into this with different businesses and like going back and forth with the administrators. Even if you create an incident for and you submit, you have to submit proof of document and proof of, of residency in, in certain ways. They're, they're on at least a six month backup for anybody to even look at that incident. So that's why I was wondering if we were having a problem on this end with. with that through our contracts because you have to have that in order to get a federal contract, but it doesn't have to. So we do. I think we've extended the deadline knowing this backlog. We have extended it initially. It was September, then it's October. I can see an email probably tomorrow saying November. So hopefully that will help with the issue. Thank you. Seems to be on top of it. That's that's good. Yeah. Thank Excellent. You. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Any other questions? on the first part. If not, we'll go to information technology, which just starts on 431. Mr. Paduk, your question? Okay, my question is on uh, page 435 about the contractual increase of okay. 300,000. Can you just give us an idea of what 
Uh, some of that is 5% across the board on, on the multiple contracts that we're projecting to go up. And some of it is for the new void type stuff that we're doing and other contracts that we have um, for maintenance for they're coming in and basically doing white glove handling that stuff. Um, that's pretty much really all it was. Okay, on page of uh, 437, the proposed position, can you tell us about that for 52,000? Yes. Um, we are proposing, is that the fiscal tech, I believe? Right? It's, I want to make sure. Oh, that's the AV tech. Okay. Yes, this is the AV tech. This is a full time audiovisual tech that will be used countywide uh, for all county locations and departments to handle the audiovisual like what you have here. Um, it's not as elaborate as this system. Right here for the chambers and the courts, we have a vendor that handles all of that, especially with the different hours and stuff that you guys have your meetings and stuff. That's all done through a vendor, but the rest of the county is going to be for a county employee, audiovisual person to go from county department to county department handling all the audiovisual. And, and, and it's not like the old days when you had a cart with an overhead projector. You know, you can't. You can't put a, a, an IT tech to do this. We've tried. It's a totally different expertise. You're dealing with sound, equalizers, all kinds of stuff that they're just not trained in on that. So we need this position because uh, every department utilizes their, their, I call them comm rooms like this, uh, mental health, health, are always doing stuff, especially remote. And we're having the meetings and then, you know, you're fixing microphones. There's, you're not being able to log in. It, it, it's a major problem, especially when it comes to AV. No more film strips where you have no to worry about the bulb burning. No, or those transparencies that you put in the overhead. Yeah, that's all gone. Okay. Okay, thank you for that. And this one on the uh, 438 your maintenance contracts. You got a, almost a $300,000 increase there. What is that? Which one was that one? Uh, I don't know what. Page four. I'm not looking at this. I'm looking at the book. Oh, the 285? 285, 866. Right. Oh, I thought we just answered that one on. Well, um, no, that's the same. Oh, yeah, because you, you it's did. different on yours <laughs> and mine. Yeah, that's why we tried to do it like this for you. That was the question I just I answered for you about. Uh, oh, yeah, that's one. The main is contract. Right. One is not. Right. So, yeah. yeah. yeah just two. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank that's you. Cool. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, yes. Questions on anything in the budget book? If not, we'll move on to the capital plan, which is on page four. And again, it's um, one line item for our uh, technological updates. Jim, description? Again, um, keeping it like we had talked about, very general. Yeah. Not giving um, away um, any. Uh, proprietary information due to uh, neighboring counties have uh, recently had many problems with uh, yes. hacking. Explain the whole situation. Okay. Um, as you know, Suffolk County has, is still down. They were hacked. Um, they actually have 111 staff members, IT staff members. Um, it doesn't matter how many you have. You're never going to be 100% protected. I don't even run, use different words. Uh, basically, what this capital budget does for $10,830,000 is give us the tools that we need to keep things running. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to say more than that. Yeah, it, it's for our protection that we don't really say too much more, in my opinion. Questions from uh, committee members? Ms. Totel. Uh, is this something that went through, will go through, is this like several different components? This Multi. One, this is multiple components. Right. Okay. It's not one single source. Okay, great. Thank you. That answered my question. Mr. Nagasakis. Can you talk about the companies that you would use you can't talk about that's somebody. the thing we don't really want to right. give any highlights to someone listening who knows specific specifics right. about the, the technologies from the from let's say the dark website i'm, I'm, I'm not i'm not worried about people on our website. side of the web yeah at another time with you if you'd like one-on-one -on -one. okay or whatever good good understand 
Well, that's, we throw down. that's why we have executive session. So I'm, I'm happy to wait till the next time you hear before ways of means and go to executive session. Then. But at some point, we have been told. Oh, 100%. 100%. And I so want to tell you. you. you want to do it now? Right. We'll wait till next month. Doesn't matter to me. Why not just do it now? If you're going to go into the any concerns about executive session? To the extent that it is a matter of public safety, we would have to go into executive session. I would feel more comfortable if there was somebody from the county attorney's office present. Okay. Just to the extent that it is the executive branch that we're doing. Okay. Can we uh, call down and see if someone can come up? Sure. I don't mind taking a little bit of time. To... Well, you're right, you're right. Sorry. <laughs> In the meantime, I think we could uh, move for uh, any other questions on the general budget for general services and information technology. Hearing on all of those in favor as presented. Aye. Aye. Opposed. Aye. Opposed. Aye. Opposed. Aye. And one abstention. Yep. And uh, so that's Karen. So we'll just wait a second on this for uh, this particular question. Did we? I don't remember. Did we have a uh, motion and second on it? Yes, okay. from, from the beginning. Okay. Yeah. All right. We didn't have to do separate for our... We're doing it separately. That's what we're doing now. Okay. So, so carry on. We yes. separated out the approval of the budget okay. from uh, from the capital plan. Mm -hmm. So it would pass uh, all in favor except Mr. Cheney, who abstained. No, none opposed. Sorry to call the county attorney's office. Okay. Gonna... Great. That's the Okay, perfect. Mr. Chairman, either move on to somebody else or yeah. take, take a recess. One, one or the other. Um, let's move on to Mr. Wiley. If, if Mr. Burford doesn't mind. If you don't mind. Thank you. Absolutely. Come on up, Paul. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay, so first up, we have uh, deed sale parcels. Can I get a motion in a second for discussion? Pressure, Mr. Tell. Okay, so uh, looks like we have uh, two pages today. So we'll start with page one. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to present these properties to you. Um, yes, it's two pages. It's nine bids for seven properties. So if I may, I'm going to combine uh, two of them, which are uh, two different dates on the same property. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, numbers uh, 1A and 1B are um, both bids on the same property, both by adjoining property owners. Um, the first one is for $1,001. The second one is for $2,500. Um, kind of a no-brainer, I'm going to suggest that we accept the second bid, which is more than the minimum and more than covers the bank. Okay. <laughs> Any questions on this property? Again, it's the one labeled 27621, if you have the individual maps. It's a narrow strip of land between two uh, different lots. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, next All right, up, thanks. Next up, number two. Um, this one is a highly irregular eight lot that's um, between um, a, uh, a road and I believe it's a uh, municipal boundary. And um, it has, uh, uh, we had a minimum bid of 1350 on it when it first went to auction back in 2018. Right now, the uh, back taxes uh, are almost 1900 and then penalties and interest adds another $944. Uh, we have a bid of $1,401. I'm going to recommend that we accept the bid of this. Um, this property was only bid on once before, a few years ago. A company called Auction Flippers bid on 15 properties and forfeited on about 10 of them. And this was one of them. And I think it was one of the things where they just bid on properties, 
look more carefully at them, realize that they didn't want it, and then just let their deposit go. That's the only uh, activity we have on this one, other than this one. So I would say $1,400 is better than, than nothing. Yeah, and everyone can see how such a irregular sliver this kind of is. Right. A lot of little funds, but no. Yeah. Okay. Um, Next. Oh, any questions? Oh, sorry. Is this like the embankment by the creek? Is that what we're talking about? I think it may be. Um, I have not uh, personally inspected this one. But none of the creek would be sold as part of this. It's just the embankment. I think it's just the other side of this property is the military academy. Yes. So it's the military academy, the creek, then this property, and then the housing building. Correct. But they wouldn't get ownership to the creek as part of this one. No, it does not look like it fronts on the creek at all. It's just next to it. Right. And, and I can't necessarily explain why parcels were created that way, but over time between between roads being widened or rearranged or uh, different boundaries coming in, it ends up pushing off very odd sections of land at times. It has no other real use or utility in the so That's why I re recommend accepting that bid. Uh, Satisfied, Kevin? Yes. Okay. Mr. O'Donnell. Yes, so going back to the previous owners of auction, whatever the name you said they were. Auction flippers. Flippers. So you might have to check this out with the county attorney goes. So sometimes it should be easy to do. Um, do we have any language that we put into these auctions that if you fail to uh, pay, it's going back on the auction? But this is what I'm looking for. Are you also disqualified from bidding for a year, two years? Or do we have a problem that some of these people keep bidding and then don't pay us? That's a very good uh, question. Uh, so say, check with legal. Right. If we're legally allowed, put that type of language in there. And I'm not sure it's even a problem, but it could be. Right. Well, what it comes down to is when people lose their, they forfeit their deposits, so we at least get to 10%. And um, so if they want to keep doing that and losing their 10%, we will keep taking it, but you're right. Especially at auction, we lost the opportunity to sell it the first time at auction. And that's the time you can do the best as far as recouping money and recovering losses. Uh, now you see here, you're four years later on the leftover list, and these people had bid on it, uh, I think believe it was May of 2021, bid on it and then forfeited. And so then it sits again. Yes, we got their 10% bid, 10% uh, of their bid, but that's it. So. And that's a, that's a good one. Look at it. Yeah. Hopefully you'd like to get a couple that are interested at the auction. Mr. Nagasakis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm, I'm not sure how the uh, how the auction company conducts the particular auction we have, but would there have been underbidders on these particular ones that they um, forfeited their 10% that we could then contact the underbidder and try to get at least the purchase out of them? Well, keep in mind that in this case, the, um, the last bid was on the leftover list in 2021. This went to auction in 2018. But you're right, there is the, when people renege on the, um, on their original offer the day of the auction, if they don't complete that that day, you can go to the second day. Right, because but, if you're delayed a year or two, then then it's the, you know, it doesn't make sense to go to the underbidder. He's gone somewhere else, but if it occurred, like you said, the same day or the same week, you have an underbidder, I was just curious if you contact them and attempt to, to complete the transaction, at least with the underbidder. Uh, in, in the day of the auction, yes. Um, after that, everyone has 30 days to to make good on the other 90% that they owe. So we can't take any action until after the 30 days. And then at that point, it's now going off the auction. It has to go into that. So they've got within 30, they've got up to 30 days before they forfeit their 10%? Yes. Okay. So again, I mean, my point is the quicker they forfeit it is the quicker you could take action with an underbidder, but even 30 days, there still might be an interest in the underbidder yes. one of the property if you got called oh yeah i would be interested in i think that's why a lot of the um properties shortly after um there's an auction there tends to be an awful lot of interest in the leftover list and you get calls saying you know any properties that get four from on how quickly do we go on the leftover list and our answer is you know 30 days after the uh people have bid on it and possibly forfeited there's a little bit of a process in time but we try to get them onto the list as soon as possible in fact, some of these properties that are presented to you today are properties that were just on the, uh, the last auction and before. Good. Thank you, Paul. Okay. Any more questions on this property before we go to the next? Okay, Paul. Next. Okay. 
Um, this property uh, number three in Monroe, section 17, uh, block 9, block 16, is a uh, newly rectangular uh, parcel of Crossman Avenue. Um, it has a fair market value according to the assessor of about $10,000. And uh, we have a minimum bid of uh, 2500 Back taxes are 1814 And um, I say we accept this uh, because it's an adjoining property owner and they're more than willing to back taxes. Okay. Questions from committee members or others? Okay, next. Okay, this next property um, is going to require a little bit of explanation. This property is a, a very irregular, odd, almost diamond shaped lot that's at the back of another uh, parcel. The um, person who's bidding on this is the prior owner. <clears throat> he lost the property because he claims that he did not know that, uh, that he owed the taxes on it. He has a, uh, an escrow for his property at the front. When he bought the two properties, he was convinced that they were just one parcel, as he tells me time and again, that, um, that there'd be no need for him to be paying a separate tax bill. The escrow on his main parcel was, was fine and covered. This back parcel was not covered by the escrow. I believe it's a problem of the mortgage company not agreeing, not including the second lot. Regardless, he's lost the property after not paying the taxes for about three years or so. So when he found out about it, because the auction company contacted he and the um, um, adjoining property owners, and then we did also, uh, the adjoining property owners, after it uh, failed to sell at auction. Um, so now he's wondering how he could possibly have lost a property that he thought was his, and he thought he only had one parcel. And now he's trying to, this is this is the prior owner who's bid. Um, in discussions with him, I told him the best way for him to get the property back is to just buy it off the leftover list and put in a bid, and, and, and that should get you your property back. The problem is his bid is about half of where the minimum uh, the, the back taxes are. Um, I don't know why he bid only. Yeah, he did send a, a note, I believe we probably a copy of it to your information. And it says, we see the enclosed bank check for the amount of $200 for the property that is located on or within my property located at the intersection. Hopefully my bid is accepted since the piece of land that is up for auction rests within my property. Please keep me close on the status of my bid. So he was, he was aware of, of mm -hmm all the facts so you should basically contact them and say hey come up with 197 dollars and 32 cents pay the back taxes and get your property back that's a a, a very possible uh, scenario um i have been this one i know we said we did no because it doesn't mean any taxes but i also crossed it out and wrote yes on mine because i'm going to leave that to you we could uh try to reach out to you and just say we'll accept your bid if you need that. yeah just meet the back taxes that would be my position i right. second okay. Yeah, so I don't think it needs to have any more discussion. We'll just, uh, I'll just take that uh, and remove that for today. But please, just call them and, and say, hey, you know, if you had kept the property, you would have been paying the taxes all along. So now the legislature says just just pay it and you'll get it. Exactly. Ms. Tortell. Is there a way to rectify this for him that the two lots be the contiguous and taxes? Or uh, as one for the escrow company, and we would notify the escrow company of the increase in the amount of taxes. Uh, yes, I was actually just about to say almost exactly that. Although I'm not sure about the escrow company, I'm going to leave that up to him. We can, however, merge the lots at the request of the assessor. And that was my final thing that I did say to this gentleman. I said, if you are successful in your bid and get the property back, please contact the assessor and just have them ask us to merge the lots. It won't cost you anything. We'll merge them together, and that should take care of that. But uh, the other question is about the escrow company. But I, as I said to him, I said, this is a problem with your escrow. Well. You need to contact them. We notify the escrow that the taxes period. So it would be a slight increase. Oh, of that course. you would have to notify them over uh, how And I, I can't prove it, but I believe this is just completely an oversight on the, uh, the escrow company's part. But then also compounded by the fact that he must have ignored tax bills that were being sent in for two or three years. But he, he was convinced that, that he should not own any money on there because he thought it was just one lot. And he confirmed that one lot was in his escrow. So okay. misunderstanding. I could foresee it happening in the future. Mm -hmm. yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll leave that to handle for you uh, yes. to bring back next month. Yeah. All right, next. New Windsor. Next property, yeah, so in New Windsor, 65127. Um, this one is a. Um, 
it looks like it's uh, 102 by 228 foot lot. Um, it just went to our uh, to our auction. We had a minimum bid of five hundred dollars. I'm, I'm sorry, a minimum bid of thirty five thousand dollars. We have a bid here of five hundred dollars. No further discussion necessary on that. Well said. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> All right, last one on the first page. Uh, Newberg. Um, again, what we have here is somebody who's um, undercut the minimum bid of ten thousand, but that was our bid at auction, and um, at that point, what uh, what we were doing for our minimum bids was this looks to be to be with the two parcels that are split by a um, either a right of way or a street, um, possibly buildable. I'm not sure. Fair market value for the assessor is forty thousand one hundred dollars, and um, that's why the uh, back taxes of sixty two hundred are you know, relative volume compared to the uh, to the value of the property. Uh, the bid is seven thousand, which does cover the back taxes, but does not meet the minimum bid of ten thousand that we set at auction. Again, though, that was set because we know that it's probably buildable, could be worth quite a bit more than 10000 We don't have to get more than that, but um, I would leave that up to you. And that is a real street, it's not a paper street? Um, I believe it's actually, uh, it does appear to be a paper street. Paper but, street. But it is split by whatever that uh, that separate uh, parcel of it is. It's a few different sections. But the total lot uh, area is um, somewhere around a half acre. So who owns the Paper Street? Oh, that I don't know. It doesn't have a parcel number on it. I have to look into that. Okay. I, I think we should all have a second look at this too, because obviously if it's a Paper Street, it could be just simply grass, and then the person would purchase it and get this whole complete trapezoid shape, uh, which probably look, does look buildable, and then we shouldn't discount too much. My opinion. Comments from uh, other legislators? Mr. Nangisakis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, it's not on this particular one, but it's just the concept of minimum bid. Any Anytime I bid in auctions, there's a minimum bid. I can't put a bid in less than that minimum bid. So we have a minimum bid, yet we're getting bids that are less. So the question is really, what is our policy? Is our policy we will accept any bid, bring it here, and let us decide because, for example, when you have thirty-five thousand and, and you get a five hundred, you laugh at it and you and you throw it away. But if you have ten thousand, you get a seven thousand. Maybe we'll discuss it. So, do we have a policy of a minimum bid and we don't take anything less than it, or do we have a policy of a minimum bid but you put anything you want and then we'll figure it out at ways and means? What is our policy? Closer to the second than the first. Um, the minimum bid is set for uh, our auction. Um, we don't try to go for the maximum that we think a property is worth, but we do want to at least cover back taxes and then maybe a little bit more than that, knowing that taxes are still uh, accumulating and accruing. They're going to be uh, possibly sitting on a leftover list for some time. So um, what I'm doing is trying to build a little bit of a buffer in, in case this property sits on the leftover list for two years, the $10,000 would, would still cover the, the back taxes uh, and the penalties and interest. That being said, back taxes right now are still in $6,700 and change they get seven thousand so we have a minimum bid policy that's uh very strict for the auction has to be at least for the back tax so in the auction they can't bid less than that ten thousand that minimum bid correct but once that auction's over then they could put something less it comes to ways and means yes and the minimum bid is uh, the minimum bid that was at auction there's no longer a minimum bid for uh for the leftover list okay got yes, it yes exactly got it thank you mm -hmm. so um okay so you have a little bit of work to do on this one as well to see about yeah. whether it's paper street where you can make one complete uh, vacant lot out of that trapezoid. Okay, so on page one, we have the recommendation to approve 1B, 2, and 3. Any other discussions on page one? If not, all in favor of taking the commission's recommendations for, like I said, on 1B, 2, and 3. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Okay, last page. And once again, we have two bids for the same property. One uh, joining property owner bid two thousand dollars for a minimum twenty thousand dollar bid with thirteen thousand six hundred and thirteen dollars worth of taxes, and the other property, uh, the other bidder was twenty thousand five hundred for this property. Uh, this is a um, um, a small residence, lack of a better term, may have been a bungalow. That's on a uh, a lot that. Um, uh, people appear to have just been either abandoned it or have just been allowing it to accumulate with the uh, with trash and overgrowth 
for some time, um, I highly recommend you accept the, the higher bill, which more than covers our the back taxes. For the okay. Questions from committee members? Okay. Right. So uh, for page two, all in favor of uh, approving the commissioner's recommendation to approve 7B. All in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? In carried. Thank you. So you got a little homework for yes. to include with next month. Next, we'll go on to the budget. All right, this is on pages 494 to 505. And I believe we did get a letter from you as well. Um, at least I know I, I thought I had it here somewhere. Yeah, you have two copies. Okay, thank you. Paul, uh, oh, can I get a motion in a second for discussion of the budget part? Russia, so I'm telling. Thanks again for allowing us to present our budget. Um, just going to quickly go over the points you had the, the letter I sent. Um, Revenue in this case, um, uh, we ended our intermunicipal agreement with the town of Newbury. Um, they chose to end it actually uh, mm -hmm. when the contract was up. And uh, so there's a, a reduction of $250,000 or so. We no longer have that contract. That's our, our revenue, uh, one of the numbers that jumped on. Um, then we go on to expenses. Um, first one, um, because Eric, my predecessor, had retired and, uh, and I replaced him. Um, we still don't have now an assistant director um, at this point. The uh, positions up in HR, um, hopefully that will go through soon, and we'll try to fill that by uh, early this year. Um, we have an assessor's clerk position in the town of Goshen that has been uh, difficult to fill since last August. And um, we have a plan on, on how to uh, deal with that. But uh, those two positions are going to be right now. Um, 580-300, that's large office equipment. Uh, we were trying to um, drag along one of our plotters for the, the last five years. We came and get a service contract with it. Uh, so now we're putting in for a new uh, plotter. Um, it's cost of about uh, $20,000 for that uh, machine. Um, Can we sell the old one or give it to Mr. Burpo to put on eBay or something? Um, yeah. Absolutely could do something like that. Um, okay. it, it's functioning now, but um, it has been uh, basically we're MacGyvering it together at times. When it's so. Someone else can use it as parts, maybe. Perhaps. Uh, paper, um, we're anticipating about 25% increase due to inflation. Paper uh, shot up on it this past year. Yep. That's one of our uh, higher uh, numbers. Uh, books and subscriptions, I know the percentage looks kind of high. We um, have not been buying too many books lately. Uh, part of that was COVID. Um, part of that was just trying to trim costs. Uh, I'm proposing that we uh, increase that number. Some of the books are getting a little bit dated. And um, there's a, a series of books that we're trying to uh, acquire for. Uh, uh, for research and for um, other municipalities to have useful stuff. Can you buy those books online, kind of like the law, law lawyers do, where they have the uh, Wests, you know, used to have a full room of uh, books, and certain, now everything is online? Certain books, yes. Um, like one of the books that um, that I used to get in my prior profession and still could use um, here, it's, it's called USPAC, it's our Universal Standards of Professional Appraisal Practice. Comes out every two years, um, although with COVID they delayed it two years. So when I get that book, I tend to buy a new version of it. Uh, much easier to use it just right off the computer and cheaper than getting the, the paperwork. Okay. Um, and that's true of uh, a few of the other books too. Uh, one of the books that uh, we need to kind of replenish is a handbook that uh, we give out to assessors. And um, the ones that we have right now in the office are the, the last few that are left are from 2008. And I believe they update things every couple of years. So, yeah, those are dated. Yeah, so uh, I need to get some of those. Um, another one, uh, 573, 710, uh, gas and diesel. Obviously, uh, gas prices are going up. Um, we're also, we've been mostly just going with, um, uh, I, I was only overlapping with Eric for about seven months. So the use of uh, the two vehicles was, was kind of limited the last uh, couple of years. Um, so if I do get an assistant, there'll be a bit more driving around. So we're anticipating gas prices going up, or gas usage going up with that. Um, that, and of course, it's more expensive than it was last year. Uh, photocopy rentals. Um, basically, what happens is we're paying now for four photocopies, where before it was three, but we had four. So I think it was that it was just somewhere else. And uh, now we've just been caught up, like, oh, we have to pay for more. So that's why there's a big increase under that. Um, uh, let's see, electric. Uh, this is for 
electric for a lot of the properties that the county owns. Obviously, uh, inflation is increasing that. Um, special travel for the county employee. What, going back one step for the uh, for the uh, properties that are rented, or maybe even not. No. Um, have we um, gone through to make sure that the equipment is up to date for winter coming for the uh, residents and such to make sure that their units are in good service? Uh, we're actually doing that right now. There's a uh, okay. the annual um, uh, inspection and service of all the different heat systems. And uh, Ashley Mechanical is uh, been going around to each of the properties and organizing uh, their their uh, times to get in to inspect and uh, service the uh, the boilers and the furnaces. That's that's been going on for the last two weeks or so. Good. Thank you. I do that each year. Um, okay. Uh, special travel county employee five seventy six seven seventy. Uh, the last couple of years uh, with COVID, um, and Eric having. Uh, been doing this for quite some time. He, he did not need to necessarily go, did not want to go to the conferences the last two years until when they did happen. Um, obviously now COVID is mostly over and we're trying to get uh, back into meeting with people. And um, I just went to a conference two weeks ago. It was uh, very, very helpful to put me the faces uh, for help with other uh, counties and county directors. It's a it's a good knowledge base to be able to uh, coordinate with. So we're asking for uh, somebody with that. Um, Oh, dues. Um, obviously, uh, we're kind of subject to whatever the uh, the expenses are um, for the cost of something like the MLS, and uh, it had been kind of pared down. Um, now it's just uh, this is what the cost is now for uh, you to be able to access the units. Okay. Uh, building grounds. Uh, I think we had cut that down a bit the last few years. We have to be careful because we can never tell when we're going to have a large expense. Uh, for some of the properties that the county owns up in. Um, it's not just the properties that we uh, have in the in the uh, reservoir properties or uh, some of the parks and other properties. It's uh, the leftover list at times. It's the uh, properties that uh, that we, we get for auction but haven't had a chance to auction them yet. And very often there's expenses that are going to accumulate with those. And, um, they're kind of unpredictable and sometimes it's like surprisingly high when it comes to having to remove a tree on the property that's hanging over some of the neighbor's property. They can run into thousands of dollars that we anticipate. Um, same thing with uh, 577 160 uh, major repairs. It can be, you know, last year that a boiler and a hot water heater in two different properties went right after the, uh, the inspection revealed last year that those need to be replaced. And so suddenly we have $5,000 worth of expense and then we have the month of So those numbers, um, um, I believe we have to keep those numbers in our budget. In case we end up having to you know, replace something expensive. Uh, same thing, uh, old rubbish removal for building. That's um, again some of the properties the county has taken. We wind up having to clean them up um, before we can sell them or so that we can sell them. And sometimes that uh, can get expensive. Um, last one maintenance, heat sale parcels. Again, <laughs> contingency and, and money for <clears throat> taking care of our heat sales and leftover. Okay. Thank you, sir. Questions from Committee members, Ms. Cotel. Uh, page 501, you have a long 577090 maintenance contracts towards the bottom of the page, three at five sheets on the bottom. The increase of uh, 14790 for this year. Those contracts are for. Uh, that's near map. It's right? near map. Right, Say that right. again. Uh, one of the main um, uh, expenses for that is near map, which is our aerial service, uh, the aerial public ground service. Um, we got in at a, uh, a fairly lower price uh, for the first year, and um, the, the price is going to go up. There's a, a connection that we got for free for the first year that we're trying to work out so that people can. The same way we had a uh, pictometry where people could just like, click on the link and see an aerial view of their uh, pictures. We need to be doing that with uh, near map, and um, there's a, a fee involved. So um, I think more than half of the 14790 is just the cost. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Mr. Perdue. Yep, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Right on the same page, too. 5768, you spent 50 payments. 2021, you spent $65. 2022, you have approved 39200 Where are you at right now? So what happened was um, we didn't get a bill from oh, we did get the bill from New York State and we didn't pay it. So I paid the 2021 bill this year. And then we also have to pay the 2022 bill. So it's really 
it wasn't sixty five dollars last year, but it, once okay. the budget was over, once January was over. Okay, so our actual was thirty nine. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So next year it's going to double. Well, because we had we paid twenty twenty one and twenty twenty two this year, we didn't pay anything. Except $65. Except the $65, right? You're going to pay 22 and 23 Yeah, you're saying. That's what right. you're saying, basically. Yeah. Well, no, in this year's budget, they have 39 too, right? Right, because that will be for 2023. We're well, going to try to get some money somewhere to pay this bill for New York State. It's for the, yeah. For RPS, right? Yeah. So you haven't spent the 39 too. I I paid 2021 in May, and then the October bill I just got yesterday, and I still have to pay that. So that's what this 39 two will be used for. Mm -hmm. So then next year, 40,650 is to pay next year. No, I'm paying it both in 2022. So yeah, at some point it should be. I'm paying it within the next month. Okay. Which you're asking. So you're not understanding? Our, RPS, how much is the bill? Thir uh, 36150 for this year. Well, what was it and last year it was the same thing, 36150. So every year is the same thing. I just didn't pay it in 21. So we have to double the payment in 22. Right, 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 exactly. And it's gone up $200 this year. Right, because the tuxes. But, okay, so the specialty payments, what happens is I charge the towns, the towns pay us, and then I pay the state. So it's not even an expense for, for Orange County. Well, if you didn't pay in, in 21, 21, you said, right. the towns paid you, so you had the money? Or no, the towns Correct. didn't pay you. Yeah. And the money came in, you didn't go out until 2020. Didn't go out, okay. Um, see right there, 5771, your maintenance repair services. You didn't spend anything in 21, you had 10,000 for this year. And you're asking for 15. You know where you're at right now. You haven't spent anything in 21. I believe that's um again. This is for our properties, correct? Yes. Great. Yes, and then we just uh, we thought that maybe the we would need five thousand for next year with the expenses going up because it's we how do I say this? So it's emergency fund really. So we might not need it this year, but we might need it next year. And if we have to replace a roof or something like that. So they don't roll over, they don't cover into the next year. No. Okay. If you did, it would just go back to general fund. Yeah. Unless they asked to come. So that's where that money went last year, it went back to the general okay. fund. And then uh, that maybe you can help me on this. I'm a little confused here on the contractual side within the uh on page 498, it says contractual 36086. But then on page 502, it says that there's a, an austerity adjustment contractual 50 grand. The difference is like $20,495. Is what, what happened there is, it, is the county executive is saying, you got to reduce it. You pick out what you're going to reduce. So yeah, so, so basically we know that again they put in a lot of stuff for emergencies of which you're so bad or something's had to be done that you get to buy it for great from home. So we put that in there. But luckily, not everything happens at the same time. So we basically figured that about fifty thousand dollars would be unspent at that budget. Okay. That's all I have, thank you. Yeah, as, as a general rule, Mike, I mean, you know, austerity yeah. adjustments are at the discretion of the commissioner or department head to find them. Right, that's right. right. But we don't ever hardly see that in any of these budgets. That's why I asked about that. Usually they're vacancy adjustments. Thank you. All right. Welcome. Welcome. All right. Any other questions? Okay. So we'll call the question all in favor of the budget as presented. Aye. Aye. Opposed? And carried. Thank you, Todd. No Paul. No I sometimes still want to blame Todd. <laughs> okay, so let's go back to um, four. Mr. Burpa. Yes, sir. Please come to the table to continue our discussion on the capital plan. 
Um, oh, there he is. You had hidden behind Mr. O'Donnell. Yes, yeah, so there was, there was discussion about going to, to executive <laughs> session to discuss the IT specifics. No problem with that, sir? No. no okay, so you need to state the reasons. Yeah, so if somebody wants to make the motion pursuing public officers on section 1051A, which is a matter that will imperil public safety and disclose. So moved. Okay. Second. And I have to this in Russia. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried? Okay, thank you. So we'll move to executive session. Mr. Joy, we just need to push both.
Okay, so uh, again, uh, I need a motion and a second to go back into the public session. Mr. Hines, uh, Mr. Paduke, Mr. Hines, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. And just for the record, let the record note that no action was taken in executive session. So we can go back to our discussions on the uh, IT portion. Um, other questions um, that would uh, pertain to uh, anything left to discuss on the, the proposal for the uh, 10 million eight hundred and thirty thousand to be included in uh, the capital plan. Okay. Seeing none. All in favor, and let the record note that Ms. Totel did have to take a break, but we'll include her as an I because I'm sure she's. Uh... You can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true. <laughs> you can't do that. All in favor of those present, present. Aye. 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 Abstain. Yes, and, and she did make it back in time. Okay, again, uh, all in favor except one abstention. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, on to uh, budget. Deb, come on up. Okay, so again, uh, budget review. Our page is 506 to 516. And we have uh, a note for changes to the budget. Okay, yep. Motion and a second for discussion, please. Second. Donald Hotel. Yep. Okay, so our major changes in the budget um, is we did increase our other revenue sources, and that comes from the mining of the quarry property. So we get that, and it averages about 47, 48,000. So we put in 50,000 this year. Um, we have also asked for two additional positions, one budget analyst, um, and that is based on different conversations that we've had with O'Connor Davies. Regarding the grant situation, we would like to uh, propose a new grant fund and have somebody maintain and analyze all, all the grants monthly. Uh, also, a budget tech. Uh, this is we are now going to be helping um, some of the smaller departments with their financial procedures. Uh, we're helping right now. We're helping uh, human rights. We're helping veterans. Um, we're actually also helping um, the IRS program until they get fully staffed. So we're doing with that. Okay. Undistributed revenue, 521 to 523. Okay, so undistributed basically just balances out uh, the taxation piece. So if we don't actually take a piece of sales tax and put it in every single budget, okay? Had we do that, had we done that. Um, the taxation would decrease, right? But we we just kind of balance it all out with, um, and we use compassionate care. We have casino revenues. We have interest and in earnings. Um, so we just balance it all out there, and it will always uh, balance to zero because there's no expenses. Okay. Questions from committee members. Mr. Padu, yeah, you sure. hired you hired that one. Right? You, you no, I haven't. Share in the budget for next year. The budget tech and the budget in. That's for next year. Oh, so you don't have any. I do not have any. Yeah. You're out there for a bit now. Right? You're open for the time. You're up. Um, oh. I have. <laughs> and I, then I have I'm sorry. And I leave that fast. So okay. quick. I have a, just a question. <laughs> oh, you can go back. Okay. Go back to. But please state the pages. You have 519. Specialty material. <laughs> but what's new for that? I mean, we had a. Have you spent twenty thousand dollars this year? Okay, so this is in central printing and mail, correct? At the bottom, right? Uh, and for sure. specialty. Oh yes, I'm sorry. Okay. And which account did you want to use? It's just uh, I don't know which one it says specialty materials is, is zero in twenty-one. We gave you a hundred thousand in twenty-two. 
we use most of them? Um, so, so basically, I have the um, numbers to date. So to date, we have spent $237,870. I know we have approximately $150,000 that still has to go out to the, out to the vendors. So, that's yes. That's specialty material? Yes. Well, that, that's all in general. Oh, that's all, that's in, all general. in general. Okay. Then you, you, just the contingent account? Mm -hmm. We went from two million to five million. Is there a special reason we did that? Because we, how much have we used though for twenty twenty? So we've used about six hundred thousand so far. But um, the reason that we did do this, um, there are some issues with the sheriff's budget that came to light at the hearing. Uh, well, it, it, it's for several different things. They had asked for certain different um, positions that we uh, excluded from the budget, uh, and we feel that based on a new sheriff. Uh, and his administration, he should be able to evaluate what positions that he needs. So we have that there. So we have uh, also, for that. also um, there is a very large reduction on the ICE prisoners. Um, so right. at this point, we, we did reduce that significantly, but there could still be a, still a significant reduction on that sure. revenue source. Okay. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just said that just on the, the same page, it's on the 510 personal services, $150,000 increase. Is that the 3.25 in the seven? So that includes that, but it's basically the two new positions. It's basically, but it includes that as well. Yes. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Okay. Anything? Other questions from other legislators? Mr. O'Donnell. What's the advertisement for? Okay, so this is in central printing and mailing, correct? So basically, we have a new retention and recruitment um, committee. And, really? <laughs> and I, I have put some money in there to see um, what initiatives they might. There might be some advertising or some special promotions that they want to do uh, to recruit people. So they don't have their own budget. Stop arguing. Mm -hmm. Resources um, so basically, central printing and mailing is like a communications thing. So if it were some kind of a mailer or something that would go out like that, I would, I would probably put it there. Goes in the, have you ever done that with any other department? Um, we do do it with some of the legislature stuff. So um, anything for the charter that gets printed and stuff, we do it for law. Yeah, so we do do stuff like that. That's not that. It's not advertising, no, but that's I'm printing and such like that. And that's, and I did put it in that line, just I, I didn't know what their intent was. You don't think it should be in their budget? It, it could go uh, either way, to be honest with you. It, it didn't, I put it, yeah, I put it there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and like I said, not really. Uh, must have been approved by the county executive. So. Exactly. They don't want to say they're spending any money on that committee. Smith too lot to figure out. Or or other people can get at it. Ms. Tartel. Yeah, in, in keeping that you're referring to the advertising on page five nineteen, the amount of fifty three thousand five hundred dollars. Right. Where it's jumped fifty thousand dollars for <laughs> this legislative budget. There was 2,181 spent in 21 and 3,500 was adopted for 2022, the current year. Um, I, I would have to really go back and look, but I specifically remember in previous budget hearings, different, I, I know Valley View had something in there under the retention uh, for advertising to submit to people to get people to, to retain or to attract new employees. They had a line, I remember that specifically from yesterday, and I believe I remember other lines uh, from different departments. So, so that those would be like salary pieces that would go. So yeah. for the retention and stuff that we talked about yesterday, um, that is um, a retention bonus or a hiring bonus to get people to come on. So that would be kind of like a salary for them. And then you're saying like we we print for law and we print for we, do. we print mailers. Um, you know we have several mailers that go out every year. Also, wouldn't that be under specialty materials instead of advertising or under the well, printing? And, and actually, and it, we have a printing line right there for eighteen. It depends. On, it depends on who prints it. It, it could be 
we create it, we print it. We could have a, uh, a consultant print it. We could have somebody in an advertising agency print it. Yeah, I just, I, I agree with, with legislator O'Donnell. I mean, fifty thousand dollars in, in an advertising line for printing to me would, I would say that would go under printing or under specialty paper, not there where you know you can say, okay, I'm going to give. Forty thousand dollars to ABC right. Media because right. you know I want to. And, do and some of my intent was probably like if you go on the Hudson Valley News line, sometimes you put the advertisements on the side for retention and recruitment for that. So that was just something. Yeah. Intent. Well, I, I kind of don't like the way that looks in it. Yeah, I just don't know. If, I, I would have divided that out differently. Okay, Mike. Okay. Yeah, I think what the problem is, is correct me if I'm wrong, by being here, anyone from the county executive's department can decide to use that for any reason, as opposed to if it was in a specific and it would only be the committee, correct? Uh, that is correct. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Mr. Dow. All right, so. Uh, was here earlier said their specialty payments of forty thousand dollars. What what the problem with that? And if they don't use it, it goes back into the general fund. How many other departments have these specialty payments that if they don't use go back into the general fund? Everybody, everybody, yes. everybody. I don't need it now. But if you could get us a number okay. on that, okay, that would be great. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Five Special to twelve. Special total. How much? Total. Because they basically told us they weren't even going to use it, but don't worry about it. It's going to go right into the general fund. Total. In the budget. So, um, what's our forecast for how much money we're going to have left over at the end of the year? Right. Well, we'll see. All right. So, kind of Davies tomorrow. We will. Um, stay tuned. <laughs> my my projection is probably sixty million less. Uh, it's a less than a surplus for this year. Sixty million. Sixty. 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 Okay, but but honestly, it, it is really and truly based on a couple of things. It's sales tax that has just been we um we did not increase our sales tax for the first year of COVID. The second year we increased it minimally um and again we were still in the throes of when we did this 22 budget we were still in the throes of COVID. we really did not expect this to be like it has and it has grown. well you're making excuses for having so much money <laughs> <laughs> there's a part of me that I see huh? the sales tax on that. Oh my gosh, there's more money. <laughs> no, that's 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 not bad at all. I just want to explain that's how I did it. That's, that's, this year. that's this year. What are we forecasting for next year? So for next year, how much surplus we'll have at the end of next year? Because you got like where I'm going with this, you got five million dollars in contingency for the share of business. Uh -huh. You got some other money in contingency <clears throat> in yours. Right. Right. So you got five years, three years, four mm -hmm. years, six years. Mm -hmm. Hey, I just noticed from when I was with Daddy, we used to hide money all over the place so you guys could never find it. Okay. <laughs> five so that's what I'm reading. Exactly. Uh -huh. How much money is in all these extra contingencies? Jimmy, Jimmy, some of us found. Correct. So. So, so, that's like, extra contingency so we, have, we have an additional so 3 million in contingency you do in, in the contingency line right. in the whole contingency um however we did not include any surplus in the general fund so that's an, a, a reduction of nine million dollars okay we do have um we do have some money for capital projects which i discussed at our budget 101 that's with 6800 Six million. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Answer. That is correct. And so we have that's normally not done. That is not normally done. And we have five million. So that would be where I the money gets moved around, Michael, which you can never figure out, but that's okay. 
I'm going to show Mr. Roxanne for you. Any other places we should be looking? Uh, and, we have, and, we have uh, and, I, and I did bring that up to light the budget, <laughs> just so everyone knows. I didn't. I was sure. hiding it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just bring yeah. it to light okay. for everybody. All right. Advantage here. Yeah, on page five twenty. These are the numbers. Uh -huh. So if we didn't have that in transfer into capital projects that we've never done before, correct? Then our surplus at the end of the year would be. Sixty-six million eight hundred fifty thousand. Is that a fair statement? Uh, that could be. It could. It, yes. It, it would be. It would be. Well, we would. We would probably um, have to reduce taxes further. I mean, to be quite honest with you. To be quite honest, it's not a good idea. It's All right. Good. We we did reduce it seven point six million dollars, um, and. Going forward, you can, even though we reduce taxes this year, you can still only increase your tax by 2% exactly. next year. Everybody's With inflation going up, um, it will. Mm -hmm. okay. But by doing this also, um, by with the transfer to capital, we will not bond any funding. So there'll be no further debt service going forward. Right. Mr. Brasher, just a quick question on it. On, is there discussion to extend the cap, the two dollar cap on gasoline in the next quarter, or the first quarter of 2023? Because we haven't talked about that. We did it for the last quarter. We jumped on the, the train late in the year compared to other counties. But I mean, I would hope that we're going to extend that next year, especially with what you just explained. Right. I'm, I'm not aware of any conversation. Well, I hope we have it at the next meeting or the, okay. the subsequent after that. I'm glad you brought that up. Can you get me I got the you. names of the taxation that we have talked to and in December's ways and means bring in your package on this yes. Because yep. I've talked to in December. <clears throat> so I talked to a few gasoline stations mm -hmm. that tell me mm -hmm. they got nothing. That's right. Nothing. So you know who's gonna keep that money? Mm -hmm. The state. Mm. Unless we can figure out that the state never sent anything from what I could tell. I only talked to two, neither one of them had it. Their accounts never got anything. So obviously if they didn't get anything, they didn't do it, All right? So nobody here is benefiting, whether it's contract going through or our own taxpayers. But we've already asked the state to do it. We had to ask permission. That was the big rush at the Budget, not the budget meeting at the full legislature. It was to make it a big September. September. Right. September. 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 Last quarter. It was during the summer. And that's so what I want to look. I want to talk to the state and right. make sure that, hey, if they never did it, that they don't keep that money. Because we already told them it's a reduction in what we you know what I, mean? mm -hmm. I, I know what you mean. That all right. of a sudden they keep whatever it is, but it's whatever it is, they already got it in their computer. And to your point about extending it, you got other counties already said they're not extended. We'll see what happens. Mr. Bidu, did you have a question? Yeah, I do. I just wanted to follow up with Mr. O'Donnell. We asked you about the specialty payments. Uh, we have it for 2021, how much they use. Yeah, okay. you give us what uh, I can give it to you. What I'll do is I'll, I'll give it to you by um, October 31st. Right, and, then, the first and, and the same thing with contingencies, like he asked, uh, each department that has contingency money. Okay, so each department doesn't have contingency. It's one, it's one, it's one, one, one appropriation, one right? So that basically one, one. the biggest thing that we took out of contingency this, this year was the 600000 for the water authority. Okay, and then. It might have been a little bit. It but contingency monies are taxed. Right in our budget, and so especially payments. So if we, as legislators, recognize that, gee, over the years, you know, they haven't spent two million of it, we could reduce taxation. I know you say it's not a good idea, but it's a great idea if the county executive comes in on the last day and asks us to reduce it by two million. Everybody's for it. So you know, I, I don't get it. 
That's you yeah, were exactly. exactly. But the county exec came in in 2014. What the situation was. The previous county exec cut it to bare bones. And what, what happened in the first Steve, one or two I'm years? Not, just, we were I'm, in dire straits. But we're not and that's now. the same thing that will happen. We are not so put now. It in, put it in capital okay. papers or something else. Mike, so I, that was just my statement. And you know, reducing taxation is part of our job if we can do a better job on it. And look, and I'm just going to tell you, there's going to be proposals from me for about a lot of different things. And I'll even give you one example right now. If, unless, Mr. No, Chairman, let's I'll, keep okay, today. I'll, I'll say that. Yeah, say it. Right. 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 right, Ms. Totel. <laughs> okay, following up on some of the questions that Legislator Donald and Legislator Bush had mentioned. Uh, one, would you give us the breakdown on the, uh, you said $60 million surplus for 2022. Um, can you that is just a projection that's a projection okay. would you give us the actual amount of surplus i believe that was asked for when we close out can you include in that report how much of that was from sales tax and how much of that was from actual county tax she's not going to know any of these until the end of the year right. well, no no i, I understand yeah, i'm saying right. when she's because they was asked of her to do the yeah yeah, yeah it's not about the budget. Uh, and ma then, madam chair uh, there's a lot of questions going on right now that we have another special ways and means committee meeting next week, I believe. Yes. The auditors are going to be here. They are going to be First, presenting a lot of the information that you're requesting or talking about now. We have leadership is meeting with them tomorrow morning, and then the entire uh, that would be a special ways and means committee on the first. And a lot of these questions you'll find in the packet that they have put together. So just and, and many of those uh, sales tax, hotel tax, different things they will go over. We'll and see it's, it's all broken my down into each correct. section. Uh, I think everybody in this room is familiar with it. They've done it again, and a lot of the things that you're talking about, uh, you're going to find those answers there. And, and then the, 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 and carry that at the end race. Can I just add to that? So my charter by the 28th of February, we give you three hands to the county legislature draft financial. So that can kind of help with your question. You know, that's the draft, and then our auditors come in and give us real actual numbers. Once again, we keep saying that word draft will be given to you on the 28th of February. Yeah, but I think the yeah. importance of that was that you know we're doing a budget now for next year and can't do anything about it then too late then no, well the year is not going to close out they, they have it's the same with like look at with the igt payments with dog i mean some of those don't come in until you know june of the following budget year in the following budget year um and then uh, i know that we had faced a um hard deadline a fast deadline with we had to get it in by a certain time frame for an extension of the gas tax if you could look that date up and let us know because we might not be able to wait till December. we might need it for november i'm, I'm just on that one. And then also um, there was page. Yeah, I, I'm looking at the page. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Page 520. You've got um, the total capital fund, 6,850,000. Mm -hmm. um, did we, I thought I remember something being, I, I was listening to one of the meetings. I thought I remember one of the capital projects being adjusted. Is that going to increase that line? I don't remember something in one of the capital budgets that we talked about more that they were talking about more. No, I, I, don't, I don't think public so. works. Okay. Public works. Yeah, that's yes, they, there were, I believe, three items in public that, works yeah. that we were adjusting or eliminating um, the money okay. that was in the capital plan that was going to be funded through um, the budget. Through the city. Or ARPA. Or ARPA, right. right. So will that, will that number then? It, it's not that. Um, and basically, it's kind of th this transfer to capital is basically what we just did with several of the DPW and parks projects. We um, took money from the surplus to fund it instead of bonding. So right. that's basically what this will be also. And we have a couple of proposed projects, um, but some are still to be determined. Okay. And so if we take it from the ARPA funding, then it reduces it out of this fund? It, it could. Okay. But again, with ARPA, you have to be really um, right. on top of it. There's there's deadlines and such that has to be encumbered by such and time, and the project has to be completed by right. the end of 2026. I understand that. Okay. So those projects that you were talking about won't reflect no. on this line. Okay. 
Thank you. Thank you for telling me which one it was. I couldn't remember off the top of my head. No problem at all. Thank you for sharing. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. O'Donnell? I'm going to miss this. What page? 519. It, it, again, I put in $100,000 for the retention and recruitment fee <laughs> for. This is consulting service. Right. And, and we can have a consultant do a pamphlet for us or something. So you know, there's also $50,000 yes. yes. committee? Yes. So it's not $50,000. It's $100,000. Exactly. And it could be used, again, it could be used for elsewhere, but, you know. Okay. Mr. Nagnostakis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and Deb, I'm not sure I'm correct on this, but on, on page 520, so you, you made a blanket statement that your guess is like a 60 million surplus, but but would I not be correct to say that if I take all of these uh, expenditures on 520, the 17 million 350, that really the surplus would be more like uh, so, 77 so million? So I, I, was, I was talking about my surplus for 2022. Okay. 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 Good. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Hearing none, all in favor for the budget for budget? Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? Carry. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next up, finance. And again. For finance budget review is on pages 471 to 493. And we also have some narrative to that, I believe. Yes, I submitted um, a change. Motion and a second for discussion, please. Second. Okay. Duke and Hines. Eric. Good evening. So, as you see, I did submit the changes to the budget. So, if you don't mind, I'm just going to refer to that item that I submitted. Um, one of the big increases that you'll see this year that I'm um, pleased to announce is our in interest and in earnings portion that stays in the finance budget alone. I increased that number this year to $610,000 from $40,000 last year due to the rate of return that I project for the county overall. This is just finances piece that I'm keeping. So what we do is the interest and in earnings is spread out through the different departments. It's allocated based on the amount of accounts the department has and things like that. So this is the portion because we do a lot of the work to ensure that we're getting that interest in earnings that we're keeping that portion of that. Okay. Can I ask quickly what what's the interest that you're projecting to get you to 2.5 for the 2.5 million for the whole and what am I projecting at? Um when I did this budget the interest rate well, I'm confused what's the 2.5? The 2.5 is the total for the county that I projected that I gave to budget to Okay. Use. But your portion is a 610. Mm -hmm. And and but what interest rate are you oh, projecting to derive? So when I did this, I was projecting at two point six million. No, what interest rate? Two, uh, two point six. I'm sorry, I said two point six. Two point six percent. Yes. But 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 short term rates right now, three month T bills are at three and a half percent, and the Fed's going to increase another seventy five basis points. I understand that, but when so we're going to be in the five percent level all of next year. Well, we just went out to bid yesterday, and we got back three point four. But you're projecting for next year for the full year a total of two point six, and I'm saying the I said rate two point five, yeah, two point five percent. Million. Two point oh, five million. million. Two point six percent is what you're projecting. That's what I projected when this was done in June. Yeah. Right, but I'm saying now that would not almost a double of that be a better projection if you could do it today or next month as a projection as opposed to in June when you did it. I wouldn't no. I mean, I would keep it at this level. I understand what you're saying, but I can't then assure the fact that next year that the interest rates aren't going to drop again. Okay. Well, the Fed is assuring that by all the statements. I understand. And, yes. and the current rates where we stand today, where we stand today yes, are, are but, uh, almost almost fifty percent higher than the number that you're using. We'll make more money. Right. But so this is an under projection. But you're saying budget. at five. But that's okay. Yeah. That, thank you. No, I get what you're saying. No, at five percent it's almost twice. But right now we're almost fifty right. percent higher than two point six percent. That's okay. We can figure that out in the future meetings. Right. Again, like she said, it was done in June. Yeah. Can we do everything else? 
<laughs> All right. So I guess that wasn't as big of a highlight as I thought, right? Um, <laughs> so now I'm just going to go to the expenses. I do, as other departments, I am requesting two additional positions. Why I'm asking for this is that in our department, we have five different divisions. As you guys did, uh, excuse me, this year with our payroll area, you went, we have a uh, payroll supervisor, and then you gave me an assistant supervisor. <laughs> And then underneath them, they have three additional staff. In my other areas, I have two grade 16s, and then I have three and four grade eights. I am looking for a grade 12 in between so that the grade 16s aren't available. There's someone that can help with, you know, our check processing or our tax window. And honestly, the, the difference between the grade 16 and the grade eights, it's a huge difference. So I can't have a grade eight doing the grade 16 work. I'll be happy to answer any other questions that you have. Okay. Questions from other legislators? Mr. Baduke? No. I no? Don't. Okay. <laughs> You're not going to ask that I have an $8,000 reduction in non uh, consultant make, services. I asked you to make all your uh, <laughs> suggestions and announcements that you would like. So uh, yeah. you, you kind of stopped kind of early. I mean, I could go through line by line, whatever you'd like. No, I mean, I mean it highlights that you want to point out. Yeah. This is your time. So, yes, just a reduction of $8,000 in contractual um, services. And then in specialty, I did ask for an additional $1,000 as we have, you know, potentially more of us going on trainings with COVID <laughs> reducing and opening up seminars and conferences. Okay. All right. Any questions from legislators? Ms. Tartel. Yep, on the other page where the um, listing is coming in place. But on page 477, uh, 562-580, Deputy Commissioner of Finance, an increase of $125,900. That's for the second deputy. That's for the second. That was approved this year. Okay, so that would be two employees dividing it. Dividing the total salary line by that, right? So there was one deputy that was there that was myself. And then this year when I got promoted, I requested a second deputy. One deputy spot is filled. I'm hoping to fill the second deputy spot next year as well. Okay. So that's one position. Two positions. Two. Yeah, the increase is one position. The increase is the one Yeah, yeah. so the, it's 125. One. Yeah, for one, one employee. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. I picked up on that. Thank you. I think we're in the wrong line of work. And then uh, a general thing, and I guess this would be the place to it. I, I spoke to Deb in the beginning of the budget review about this, is that almost in every department across the board, our hospitalization insurance costs have skyrocketed. And that's just something to know budget wide for, for us as legislators. I mean, if you go to if you go to the budget online and you just put in, you know, a control F for searching the PDF and put in five eight six six zero zero under hospital insurance, it's the same number for every department. It has it has increased significantly and um it's a scary predictor for the future. Um, can I just note that we really do not have the actual rates yet? Yeah. This is just a prediction. This is just a prediction. Right. Sure. And, and along those lines, um, when we add positions, how do we handle the benefits of that? Do we look at it as a family? As a family. As a family. So it's possible that it could be less adjusted that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we offer the buyout for employees too if they have health insurance for us, which is a savings too. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Mr. Nainastakis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to go back just to make sure I understood and with my notes. Sure. So um, the 610,000 is from interest that we were talking about on page 474 um, that you derived for the county. Um, so 610,000 is in your department, but you said 2.5 million for the whole county? For the, yes. for the whole county. And you, uh, you project to earn that 2.5 million 
by applying a 2.6% interest rate on the total principal amount that we have. So reverse math would tell us we have almost 100 million of cash reserves sitting around that are earning this 2.6% yes. interest rate. Okay, I just wanna make sure yes. I understood all that. Thank you. Is there a um, interest that is uh, helping for the ARPA funds? The ARPA funds are sitting in a, an account collecting, That's earning interest, of collecting course, their yes. own interest mm -hmm. as we well, correct? We went back correct? and forth to ensure that we could do that. And yes, I can earn interest on those ARPA funds. But is that separate interest? Is that separate? Is that, no. is that number separate somewhere else? No, it's not separate from the projection number that I gave for the, the 2.5 million? Yes, I included that. How much of that roughly 100 million would be the ARPA funds? It was like 75 million, yes. But initially when that was done, um, it was 75 million that I have, but that money should be spent. So I didn't include the whole $75 million in my projection because we should be spending that Probably money. Like half, as, like half as much. Yeah, you, I mean, you, you, you would hope that for the full yeah, year. we need to spend. Okay, okay. okay. So you don't have an exact number or anything close? I'm sorry. I mean, you're saying you have a hundred million dollars in cash reserves inflated in Megan's pocket. That's how you got the 2.5 million based I, on the 2.6%. So you're saying you have a hundred million dollars in cash reserves. Next question was the how much money, of that yes. is the ARPA money? So when so I did, I'm sorry. I'll get there. I'll sorry. get there. Uh -huh. Slow process. No, no, no. I apologize for you. Oh, no, no. <laughs> so we have $75 million sitting there. Right, that we already got. Is that true? We already got that money. Mm -hmm. We haven't spent any of that money. A little, a little, bit. A little bit. Yeah. So if we didn't have all the money, we would have only twenty-five million dollars. No, no, no. no. So what no, I was you, you said we had a hundred, right? <laughs> How much do we normally have? We normally have a hundred, but the seventy-five. Now, the 75 million I used, I only used about 25 million to do my projection, hoping with the fact that we have some big ticket items that we are spending the ARPA money with, so that we're not holding on to that ARPA money for 2023. All right, I'm not too much concerned about how much interest we get. I'm, I'm looking at the bigger picture, big money in reserves. That's what I'm but, I'm, but to add on to Mr. O'Donnell, if I can, Mr. O'Donnell, if you're not if you're not using all that seventy five million to do your projection, I mean you've got a lot more than twenty five million in the in the yeah. you've got more than a hundred million. Ask, I would be at forty four million. Right. You just well, told right. me. Right, the valid view is not even counted in this in this equation. So you don't know that. <laughs> no. It's an so, enterprise fund. I still earn no, I, it's, it still earns interest, and I pay that, that interest yes, back to not an not me. Uh, million dollars. Wait, but you're not including the forty-four million in this calculation. She didn't answer the question. I was so when I did my projection, I was basing it on having with the time when we had it was at one hundred and twenty million dollars. I did the projection on that to come up with a two point five million dollars for the total. Do we have more money now than we did when the projection was done in June? Absolutely. Um, have the interest rates gone up? Absolutely. So. Is this, do I think that we might exceed this? I absolutely do, and I hope that we do. But my concern is where we are now, where the rates are, I understand what the Fed is saying, but it could decline next year. I mean, we are at 3.4% as we did a bid yesterday on money that we received. It could go down next year, and that's my concern. So that's why I did the projection the way I did. Right. Well, I understand that you're asking if, so the money that I included when I did the projection was only that dollar amount. Okay, so the actual dollar amounts that we have are more than that, based on what you just told us, mm -hmm. a lot more, substantially more than that. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So, how much? I have, we have? Well, right now we have over for about two hundred and eighty million dollars. <laughs> no, I I wasn't right. negating that. I, I was just getting get to how it, but it we all wanted to get there. Okay. All right. That's all. But I was starting to ask, and two eighty includes the forty four. Probably. Yes. 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 Okay. But we change more tax. Mr. Padu. No question. Mr. Hines. No, that was, oh, that was it. Money would value. It's part of the two way. All right. Uh, Mr. Benagastakis. Just a, a comment to, to, to take it 
and do whatever you want with it. Of course, we don't know what rates are. All I know is what the Fed says in their minutes and puts out that their target is to get short-term Fed funds overnight rates to 5% by the first quarter of next year and keep them there for a substantial period of time. That's their statement. Thank you. Yeah. They're trying to crush inflation. Yep, yep, that's right. Mr. O'Donnell. Yeah, so we have 280 people in the board of school. A little less than 200 million. How did that square with those 60 million left over at the end of this year? So, how are they two different? I'm sorry, I'm not. That question was for debt. That was debt, yeah. Yeah, so basically, I just calculate the excess sales tax vacant positions. Um, and I just look at the revenues that I project coming in versus the expenditure coming out uh, in the general fund, and that's how I figure it That's how you got to 60. That's how I got to 60. So how does Terry have less than 200? Take 75. We're going to spend some throughout no, the year. No, it's not that we're going some. to. We need right. to spend some. Yeah. Spend money. Yes. Yeah, we have yes, to spend this to. money. Yeah. And I think with that. the, you know, with the Emmys, uh, excuse me, the medical examiner's office, that could be a quick. 20 million out the door, hopefully, you know. Yeah, that's so subject that way. <laughs> but it does need to be spent by 26. Well, you, you want to stay here? No, thank you. <laughs> All right, are we, uh, any other questions? Any questions on any page and nothing left? All right. Carrie Ann, did I ask for a motion and second to, for discussion? I think you did. Okay, good. Just wanted to make sure it was such a long time ago. <laughs> All right. All in favor of the bud budget for finance as presented? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And carried. Thank you very much, everyone. Are we doing the debt service? Yeah, one more item. And debt service 754, 758. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so this is on page 756. The ask this year is $34.9 million. That's something that I don't really have control of. We just have to pay our debt service. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Questions from committee members? No, nothing. Anyone? You can make a comment quickly. Um, that is, if we have reduced debt services by one million seven hundred forty-six thousand nine hundred twenty-six. So is that from serial bonds closing out? Yes, things come off. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you know, things always come off before you end yeah. up putting. Big thing back on. Like big ticket, I guess. Exactly. Exactly. Just wondering if something really is sitting there to. All right. No other comments? Hearing none, all in favor of the debt service as presented? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carrie. All right. Jim, this up for me. Sorry. Yes, I, I know that's the last that. thing to uh, the report. I mean, it wasn't on the agenda. I just sent it to you guys. Okay. Do you want to talk about it? Sure. Um, <laughs> just for the month of October, we were 21% over budget and year to date with um, sales tax were 29.1% over budget. Mm -hmm. Are we expecting any more payments this month? This month we're closed out for October. For October? Next payments are how many in November? Two? Uh, we have two and then three in December. Okay. Any questions for her on the uh, sales tax report? Hearing none, motion to adjourn is in order. No move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you, everyone.
Steve. Steve. 